Welcome to project pack number 11. This is day seven. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And today uh, I'm going to play with a fragment or two on a phi tile. And I'm going to mark the both of the uh, phi Lines. Lines are those those sweet spots on on both the uh, length and the width, and I tend to be like, okay, I'm, I, as precise as, as you precise can be. as as Maria is, and yeah. I, I like really get into it. Like, okay, is is this where it, where it goes? But I like that we're we're sort of complementary, like sweet and savory. Right? But you need both <laughs> in this world, right? So I'm doing both. And uh, so, you know, just like we have both have different styles and we both have different approaches, you'll, you'll see how different mine is from Maria's. So as an example, I, I'm just uh, exploring using one phi tile as a, uh, guide. a guide to uh, connect those. And just doing a light line, and you know, I I like well, it's it's another option, so you can uh, you can use that or not. And I also did a diagonal, and you'll understand why in uh, as we go along. We use a different piece of paper for the diagonal. I use, yeah, I use the uh, phi uh, marker marker. So. In that first, there's a square there, which you'll soon see. I just restate that line, and I'm going to uh, do a fragment or sort of a variation of one of the fragments. I'll, I'll show you which one we use um, in the book in just a minute. So always rotating your tile when it's just for, you know, whatever is comfortable. And for this one, it's a mix of curve and straight. So this is a takeoff from one corner, arc around, and then land in this corner. And then after that, we're just going to do aura-ing. And it depends on, you know, in this case, I like to have the line I'm following to the left of my pen because it's easier for me to see it. But this is a little different because it's against the, the way I would normally move my pen. Uh, but this, this worked for me on, on this one. I felt it more important to, to have a clear view of the line I was following. And then I'm going to make a, a big, a, a giant ladybug <laughs> of a crescent moon here. Sort of. We that. haven't seen one that big in a while. No, this is a pretty, <laughs> this is a very large one. Maybe it's the season here. Yeah. So I'm just going to do a big, big one. And I'm sort of doing it to where that uh, other uh, phi line, I use that as my, well, if I had to start someplace, let me, let me use that. So you're taking your graphic one now and uh, adding your, your boldness to it. Yeah. So I'm going to use that. Uh, and again, you'll see how I rotate the tile so that the point of my pen is going up to the edge that I want most precise. Uh, we do that with the pencil and the tortillon. And I really enjoyed going back and forth at, after after I got did it a couple times. Well, that's a bold statement right, right? there, yeah. So you all probably have figured out that Rick and I don't tangle together. We, <laughs> he, 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 he's up in his uh, uh, office upstairs, and I'm in my office downstairs, and, and never the twain shall right. meet in, in, in involving tangling, because we're, we're so opposite, and we, our surprises are really delightful once yeah. we get them together. 
we'll, we'll do some pieces together like for seminars and stuff but there's a and th there's a real good lesson in that is is the idea that you know how different Maria and I are in, in our approach and and Molly and Martha gives you the idea that okay well you get to find your approach and it's not the same as any of ours so I'm going into uh, the reticula and fragment section. I've got to find it here. Uh, okay, there it is. And go, I actually opened right up to it. That's a great chapter. And the one that I'm using for this one was a variation of that L2, I think it is. So I just made it, I wanted to have some more auraing on that. And the next one, we're going to use that, uh, I think it's K7. But we'll come back and confirm that. So I'm taking this idea of the phi, and you'll notice that in that, when you laid out the grid and connected those lines, there were squares as well. There was a really big square and then there's this smaller square. So I'm using that fragment in these uh, see, you know, squares that get progressively smaller. So now he's changed his system so that the, the curve coming out of his hand is a little more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that I just decided that was much better. And, and you can see the, the comfort of the, the curve. You're going with the way your hand, the radius, the arc of, the, of your hand naturally goes. So just so you know, we change our minds all the time. All the time. All yeah. the time. And <laughs> what, what, what is wonderful in one tangle is not so much in another. And part of it is just exploring something and, you know, trying it. Well, how does this feel? Let me do it a little bit uh, differently and, and, and get used to a new uh, way of approaching it. And then you can, you know, evaluate. Well, that worked good there, and that didn't work good there. And it's part of that exploration and creation process um, that you find new things that work really well. But I think the mo the theme that goes through all of this is is to relax, to breathe and to uh, rotate your tile in a way that is comfortable for your hand. Oh, so you went back on so, the operandi. Yeah, so I want to go back on this and find the phi of these sections. So, so I'm going to keep... I'm sorry, but you, you uh, had it go up to the diagonal. That's where it met the yeah. diagonal. Okay. So, th so I just went and made... One side, so I forget, when I drew the diagonal, I drew it in the other direction, but you'll, you'll see it doesn't really make much difference. Or, I mean, the, the other one is still there. It doesn't bother me. Because I want these, you'll notice that what's magical about this, and this is what for, for me was fun, is that as you mark these little uh, progressively smaller places, it follows these descending sizes of squares. And to me, it was just like, oh, that's really cool. You know, your mileage may vary, but I like the, <laughs> I like the, <laughs> I like the exploration of this and uh, seeing where it would go. And it's part of the, the magic of, of this, this proportion because when you look at the, the back of the tile, let me just look at, look at one here, you'll see that it's a series of squares that go around in this arc. And uh, so you can check that out. So I, I played with that on this using the, uh, the reticular and fragment. And then, well, I'm just going to keep going. And again, I'm going to subdivide the uh, remaining space. And now I'm just going to guess. You know, it's, it's become just do all this freehand. And 
each. Now I'm just, now just continue with that. It reminds me of the, that uh, little kid's game where they had those blocks that one fit inside oh, yeah, of yeah, the yeah, other, yeah. and they're all, yeah. you, you have to figure out how to put it back together. Right. That's what it, you know, that's me as mom. Right, nesting, whatever. Yeah, the nesting boxes. Yeah. Okay, so there's this, uh, there's those, and let's go and get our other tangle. Other I'm gonna fragment? K4, other, fragment. other fragment, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the same thing. We'll set up the, the big square, and we'll put that fragment in. So I'm restating that line, and you can see how it happens to match up with one of the squares on the other side. And now I'm going to use the phi proportion of that square just because, well, why not, to make the, the big dark inner square. And then use the graphite to fill it in. Did you fill in that whole thing? Wow. So then I wanted to do the edge and not get ink all over the uh, table. So I just picked it up and uh, did that. You can also put a piece of paper under you. I know. And, uh, but, uh, I know, I know. So we'll fill this in. And again, the, the, uh, the heads up here is that this uh, will, will, will be damp for a little bit longer than uh, normal. So you want to keep your, the palm of your hand or whatever, your little finger off of it. So now I'm going to uh, aura that line, if you remember from the, uh, the fragment piece in the book. And I'm playing with an aura, as I often do, as, as we often do, that the gap in the aura is similar throughout the, the tile. It doesn't have to be, but it's just a habit I've gotten Continuity. into. Continuity. Oh, yeah. The growth rings, as it were. So you can see he's not putting his fingers on that black because yes. you will not want to do that. Although we have methods to get rid of yes, it. Yes, <laughs> we, can, we can deal with that. And it no might mistakes. even make it even more wonderful. You'll see I'm starting each of those lines to match up with the other ones and trying to see if I can end up with an even space at the end. Another little game. Okay, so now we're going to continue on. Another, another neat little tidbit is that rectangle to the left of that line is the same proportion as the... Uh, the whole okay, tile. I've got, yeah. Watch what I do here. So I can't draw that line comfortably, so I'm just going to put a piece of paper over that. So you won't get smudged. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I could try to draw the line in a different direction, but it would have a different character. So now I'm just going to eyeball where that, you know, proportion would be, and and you'll get to you'll get to a, a point where, yeah, I can I can see it, and it'll be close enough. I think that's what a lot of what happened in your in your work mm -hmm. when you you just you just knew it. So here we'll uh, just continue adding all those little boxes and smaller and smaller fragments. This is actually fun, just figuring out, OK, well, where would it be, and then eyeballing it, and the simple Zentangle pleasures here. And then once you get down here, just just use the grab, the uh, O1. The diagonal, just barely room for one 
little aura in there. And so we've got all of those, uh, right? That's sort of cool. Steps. Now what I want to do is uh, take advantage of those uh, chalk markers. So these are the colors that I have. You, you may have something totally different. These are uh, generals. General pencils. Chalk pencils. Yeah. And they work so wonderfully with this paper because this paper has a nice tooth to grab the, uh, the chalk particles. So Rick's using a, an ochre color. It was pretty cool. And I'm putting it down. I, I'm not trying to fully co cover it. I'm just putting down a, a, a little bit, somewhat heavy, but not like solid color, because I'm going to come back with the tortillon and use that to move it into the fibers and into the adjacent colors as well. So now he's got a red pencil adding to both sides of the ochre on the top. And then my other color was this green. So I just fill in those, those areas. And you can see how I'm really not doing it that completely or that heavy. But watch what happens when you come back with a tortillon. Look at that. It just smooths right out, like like frosting or something, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So I'm switching back and forth between between uh, tortillons, and eventually they'll all be the same color as the standard joke. But you you should have. Uh, I, enough tortillons to, uh, for a little while, have them dedicated to a particular color. But see how that blends so nice? Love that. This, except, of course, if it's me. And then I, I use the same one all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Until it, it, but it I stubs end, out. I end up with the, the <laughs> same one, yeah. Yeah, so you can see they're, they're going to all blend together. I'm just going to repeat that process for each one of those little um, squares, fragments there, and then go back, go back on it with the tortillon. Blend that all together. It has that art. You feel like a, a real artist when yeah. you're doing that blending stuff and everything. Well, where the where the colors meet, it's like. Uh, it's it's like I was talking to somebody earlier today. It's like the edges are magical, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. dawn and you know at dawn or dusk or the edge between a field and a forest. It's like it's a lot of exciting things happen there. So I'm going to use my three colors on this other fragment. See how I might mix it. Add some red to that. And start off with the green over here. Again, not totally covering it. Add some of that ochre. This part amazes me because how the, the tortillon just smooths that all together and mix it up. Didn't even bother to change my tortillon on that one. Uh-oh, shame on you. <laughs> we'll get you to the tortillon police. Right. So we get that. And again, we will just... Uh, step and repeat and get all of those uh, done in the same way. 
I like how those fragments meet from one side to the other. Get the chalk in. Get the tortillon out. Again, point, pointing your, the tip of your tortillon to the edges that, that you want most precise there. Okay. Looks totally different with the color, right? It's beautiful, yeah. So I want to put something in the, uh, that untangled space. So I need my, uh, my pencils to be a little sharper. And in your project pack, you have a, uh, a sharpener from General's Pencil, General, General's Pencil, and it, it is at a slightly different angle. It's, it's a more uh, acute angle or a less acute angle than a regular pencil sharpener because the, uh, the pastel or the color of these pencils are, is, more fra is more fragile. So it's, it's not such a delicate tip. It's a really, really good for this. Uh, so I'm just using uh, different pen, uh, different pencils to do some flux in there. And then in here, I'm just going to put some mucha. Mucha will just fit anywhere. Anywhere it 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 grows and it just adapts to its environment. And it, it can always, you know, just draw behind, go out and fill that space. Oh, you said you kind of mix, mix and match Mixing here. it up there. And then coming back with the other pencil and just, I'm very lightly putting this in. Maria came up with this whole concept of uh, ghost tangles. And you'll see that in some of our, I think maybe in the T3s on the app and about tangling with pencil. and uh, So that it's just a subtle, subtle texture. Yeah. So, so sort of like a, you know, like a, what's that weaving that, that, you know, has the pattern in the weave that you can see, even if the, even if the, the warp and weft are all the same um, color, you can see a oh, pattern. Oh, I know that, what you mean. Right? Um, Give me a minute. But it, it's that idea here. Moiré. Is that what you mean, moiré? Mm, that could be, yeah. There's another one, though. Oh, we'll, we'll think of it when we're finished. Yeah. People will put it in the notes. So once I did this very, you know, background, I just went over it with my finger. And it just puts everything, you can very faintly see that there is a tangle there. Just softens it. But it's just very soft, yeah. Okay. So I like to incorporate a, a chop that has, you know, either it's my regular circle or something that fits with the, uh, with the tangle. And so I, this is the one I did. I converted my usual circle format to one of these little boxes. And then I was very, very happy, uh, thinking, oh, I put my chop on, I'm done, and I go up and I'm show sh to, sh showing show it, it to me. <laughs> showing it to Maria. And she says, oh, you didn't shade that one. It's like, Oh, okay, back. <laughs> so back to the drawing back board. Back to the studio. So I came back down. It's like, okay, I had all this idea of shading because these, these two tangles have this wonderful, uh, or the way they are together, have this nice over and under uh, opportunity. So uh, just went, went back and... Got my graphite. And then the graphite works really well with the, uh, with the chalk. chalk pencil, yeah. yeah. You, you can really make uh, 
literal gradations of the of the chalk and, and just mix it and, and and really play with that. We we didn't include any uh, white charcoal in in this one, but if you have one from other project packs, you may uh, decide that ah oh, this just this just really wants some white charcoal or put a highlight on there. I just did all the little ones. So when you put the, the pencil down at first, it's almost jarring, and you think, oh, hmm. oh, should I have done that? But then when you soften it out and, and hold it uh, a, a little bit away from you, you can see what a cool thing it does to the overall uh, composition. So this side, I just very just put it in one place there to, to give that sense of over and under and just really change the relationship of those fragments to each other. So this was fun. So thanks again for spending the, this time with us. Looks great, Ricky. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Bye now.